morning travelers. It is day seven in Malaysia. Uh, we woke up in our gorgeous hotel room at the Eastern and Oriental Hotel. Um, it was kind of cold last night in the room, but the beds are really comfortable and you just can't beat the view that we have. We are gonna go get some breakfast and then we're gonna go explore Penang. We just finished up at the Eastern, Orient Eastern and Oriental. We had our breakfast and we packed up our stuff, but we're leaving it there until we can check out at 12. Um, but we are going to check out some street art. We are currently on a street called Love Lane. We've made our way down all the way to the Georgetown World Heritage Incorporated, which is said to be a good starting point for exploring the area of Penang and Georgetown in particular, just for looking around. Um, but they should be able to give us some maps and tell us some more information about Georgetown and help us find some more of the famous pieces of street art here in Penang that, uh, that we're looking for. Okay, so I take that back. Uh, not the nicest of people. We walked inside hoping to get some information, some maps, just to get a little more info because that's what they are all about. But they kind of freaked out and was telling us that it's an office, we need to get out. And they were very rude. They were not very nice at all. So as soon as we left, they closed the door behind us and locked it and put a sign up. So I thought this was supposed to be like a helpful place to provide more information. And they had some maps when you first walked in like as brochures but they were all in Japanese and Chinese so yeah not very nice people here so you can just skip this if you're if you're passing through. Yeah. It's a little park here in Penang very nicely manicured unfortunately there's no one here to enjoy it except for that pigeon right there. He's got the park all to himself. So we're now making our way down Armenian Street and as you can see lots of art still and bike shops and Lots of cool architecture. This guy's selling some old signs. This one's pretty cool. And obviously these aren't necessarily paintings, but they are like wrought iron welded together and it casts a shadow onto the back onto the blank canvas wall. Someone is not a fan of Donald Trump. We have now come to the most famous piece of all of the Penang street art. You can see the girl there on the bike. Very famous piece that they put on a lot of their brochures and publications, so it's very, very famous. Lots of cool different art along this street here. I thought there'd be more along Love Lane. There really wasn't that much. There was more art shooting off of Love Lane. Um, but yeah, the area's pretty cool. Very chill. But uh, we're gonna keep working our way down and kind of see if we can find some more. Here's another famous piece of street art. Not nearly the attention that the kids on the bike was getting. I don't know why, because this one's still very cool. It's like a tabby cat. Takes up nearly the whole wall. It looks like a rat wearing a gas mask? No, not it's a gas not mask. It's not wearing a gas mask, it's just its face. Okay, it looks almost like it could be a gas mask. Or like the Japanese masks when they get sick. Keep calm, carry on. The message of this piece is, I see you. 
just got the eye and that is kind of like, like a see too. a bird. How do you see a like, bird? Is that like, it looks like a beak? It looks no. Like, it looks like a beak. Oh, all I, see, all I see is the face. We made it to the end of Armenian Street and now are on Gatlebu Chulia Street. This road is much busier, so I'm not sure if there's going to be any street art, but we got to make our way back this way to get back to the center of the city. We got our first sighting. We got a bear and a little boy and some Chinese calligraphy. I love it. The Namwa Company. This is Kelly's motto for life. A balanced diet is an ice cream in each hand. This one is really cool. They've incorporated this pipe and, and the swings right into the wall. This is really cool. I like this one a lot. The brick is like broken. It just adds to the charm of this. According to this art piece, it says, up until 1909, the police doubled as Georgetown's firefighters. And he's looking a little worried here. He's got a gun in one hand, fire hose built into the wall here in his second hand. Pretty cool piece. I love his confusion on his face. He's like, huh? This is a really big piece. Kind of reminds me of like Noah's Ark. I don't know if it's just the colors and the fact that it's in a boat. We're now going to head down Lebu Pasar, and it looks like it might be an Indian street. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be like decorative or artistic barbed wire on that fence, or if they're just really afraid of someone climbing up that thing. It's aesthetically pleasing, yet very scary. Not much art going on in the Indian areas. I don't think we found any. Just the Hindu temple, yeah. which was cool, but it looks very similar to the other Hindu temples that we've seen. We are working our way back kind of towards our hotel. It's almost 11 now. And uh, maybe get something to eat, maybe if we can find something, but otherwise, see if we can find any more street art between here and there, which isn't too far away. And it looks like Penang has a bike rental service like what you might find in like Montreal or something, that's what it reminds me of, or any other, I guess, big city, but this is the first time we've seen this uh, link bike. Looks like this is Masjid Kapitan Kling, the Kapitan Kling Mosque. And visitors are welcome, but uh, looks like not right now. The gate is definitely chained up. Maybe some more information. Well, I'm not looking to go inside, but we just wanted to get a shot from the outside. I gotta say, the architecture here in Penang is just awesome. I just love these old heritage buildings with the two-story and just the colors and, ah, uh, awesome. And it's like, I'm not sure if this is actual wall art or if this is just because the name of the restaurant, the Tipsy Tiger, has anything to do with it or not. Or maybe the mural was there first and then the hostel said, you know, let's name our hostel the Tipsy Tiger. Hey little guy, how you doing buddy? I'm gonna name him Noodle. <laughs> it's the Noodle Show. Wait a second. Pardon the language, but is it a monkey or is it Mickey Mouse? Hidden Mickey? The Noodle's buddy. Heart boy. Bum, 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 bum. Love life. I wonder, do you think the artist painted it when it was a completely solid wall and then the front has kind of like fallen off revealing this cool brick effect? Or do you think they painted it just the way it was with the bricks already being revealed? Very cool little back alley. I love these back alleys. I feel like it's like a scavenger hunt, like you're looking like all over the place looking for art. <laughs> Not sure where you might find it. Definitely the more quiet areas always tend to be the most rewarding. The city is amazing.
turn a corner and art. Boom. Yeah, no art on this one, but this is like the alley you would think, like, oh, is there art down there? Cool stuff. Really cool. Photographer's dream. <laughs> The second story of this building has completely rotted through, but it still retains that cool old charm, but definitely not livable. Which is why for that's sale, there. Though. Oh, for, for sale. sale. Call that number. You could live right here in Penang. So we're almost back at our hotel. It's actually that building just right over there. I don't know if you can see the top of the roof there. But just down a little ways we found this I Heart Penang sign. So we're gonna take the quintessential touristy I Heart Penang picture. Caleb just loves Penang. He can't handle it. Stop it. So we just got back to the Eastern and Oriental Hotel. We got a little bit of time before we have to check out. So one of the benefits to a noon checkout is that you can obviously leave your stuff behind like we did and then go explore the city and then come back and pick up your stuff. We can check into our Airbnb at 2.30, so we'll have a couple of hours to kill, so we'll have to carry our backpacks. We'll probably look for some more street art um, or some different roads, really, in general, just different side streets. And then I'm uh, not sure what we're going to do for lunch, so we'll have to see what we can find. Before we go, one final look from the view of our hotel room. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. So long, room 125. Did you show who we were staying next to? No, I did not. We stayed next to Noel Coward. I have no idea who that is. He stayed there. But he stayed there, and he was famous enough to have his name put on a place card. Next up, Kang Ping Cafe. One last shot of the Eastern and Oriental Hotel. I'm so glad that we stayed here at least one night. It was definitely pricey, but definitely worth it. Across the street is where we'll be eating lunch today, Cafe Kang Ping. Let's go check it out. This is Laura Bach. I'm not really sure what it is, but they said you should get it. Yeah? What is it? Is it chicken? Felt a bit rushed at the King Ping Cafe. Well, I mean, there was very limited seating and I feel like it was just a bunch of different stalls. It was like a hawker center because it was Not just really. the stalls but in the middle was a bunch of tables. So you yeah. order from the stall and they bring it over. We were thinking it was going to be more like an actual cafe that just specialized in Lorbach yeah. and that wasn't the case. So. Good though. It wasn't bad. It was five ringgit for the two white coffees that we got and eight ringgit for the plate of Lorbach, which yeah. I wouldn't say it's super filling. We'll probably get some more, but probably not a bad thing either. I really liked the chicken. It was really, really crispy. And the tofu was really nice too, but I think my favorite thing was the white coffee. It was really delicious. Now having finished up lunch, we are back on the hunt for Penang street art. And our first sighting after lunch is this beautiful Bengal tiger here. And it looks like it's got a rope in its mouth and the one end of the rope looks like it's going inside of the building like it's an old hose or something. Another big piece on this side of this uh, mansion, Hotel Chulia Mansion. And you can see the clouds here. Looking quite ominous. And then if you look on the other side, it's looking not too bad. I'm really digging this old classic sign here. King HWSB. But the king is like you'd have on a deck of cards. Really cool looking. Not sure how old this is, but really cool looking. You're on the hunt for another very famous piece by the same artist that did the bike and the swings. This one incorporates a motorcycle. Haven't found it yet, but we did find some more. Got a couple of friends here, right next to the garbage. He's very protective of his biryani. 
And here we've got a stormtrooper. Rebel scum. This is another one of the more famous pieces. Bruce Lee picking some cat butt. popularity of the bike piece continues. More and more people come in to see it. I feel like that's the only piece that we've seen today that have really attracted this many people. All the moms trying to get their kids to pose just the way they want them. The piece is so popular, even people that just got married are taking pictures with it. Wow, a truly beautiful piece of art. This piece was not easy to find at all. We had to, we walked around it two times before we finally came down this back alley. Not easy at all. Definitely it's coming undone. See at the top? Yeah, starting to like peel. Almost looks like a sticker. Yeah, the cats here used to climb. But these guys are no longer uh, looking so hot. Yep, that's why. That guy created a block so we weren't able to see down that alley. I don't think a lot of people know about that one. Because we, we were on the other side taking pictures down there, not even knowing that this was right around the corner. The first Kendall experience. Red beans, and and bellies, brown sugar, ice, sweet condensed milk. It's like popping soup. But more um, milky. Mm. I like the pandan jelly. Yeah, those are nice. That's nice. Kelly has been craving a coconut shake since the day we got to Malaysia. So finally we have found a time to stop and get one. It's not sure if it's the original as the one in Malacca. I found like, I feel like every time we wanted a coconut shake, we couldn't find one. And then when we didn't necessarily want one in the morning or something, they were out, so. I finally got my coconut shake. It was a fresh coconut with the pieces of coconut and the coconut milk or coconut juice inside. And then he mixed it with some sort of like cane sugar syrup and ice cream. Very coconutty. It's good. So we have finished looking at street art, and now we are heading to the Clan Jetties. Oh, that car is really loud. To the Clan Jetties. But first, we have to cross the street, and it's not going to be easy. But where we are staying is in the Clan Jetties tonight, so we are going to try to check into our Airbnb. We can check in now. But uh, across the street is quite the predicament. It was not easy, but we did it. We crossed. Like, you know, you just, you just go for it. You just slowly start moving, and then they see you, and then they slow down, and then you get It all worked out. Yeah, it all worked yeah, it out. it works on the end. So now we are at the clan jetties. And there's another famous piece of street art up here on the side of this building. Lots of cool houses back here. And we are, we are above the water. Oh, there you go, there's a better shot. Not very clean water, but we are above the water. 
Reminds you of Iquito. Yeah, Iquito is Peru. That's what this looks like. Lots of tchotchke shops. So we've arrived at our Airbnb, only to find they are shooting a movie right in front of it. And we're actually a few minutes early from check-in. A few minutes, not much. <laughs> it's not expecting this many people outside of our Airbnb. Not at all. Well, we made it into our Airbnb, finally. Um, the host's uncle came and checked us in. So this is the front entrance. We have to take our shoes off here. Outside is that film crew. This is our room. Nice and cool. Pretty nice sized bed. No, nothing too special. We do have to share a bathroom, but we have Wi-Fi and a fan. So right here is like the kitchen area and the host uncle gave us oranges. nice orange slices, some water. He said we can use any of this stuff here too, which is nice. And then right out here is the water. Pretty cool. <laughs> Not gonna lie. If only there weren't so many people out there, it'd be pretty peaceful. But this is probably really nice in the morning. Fun fact, Anthony Bourdain stayed here, right in this room. He slept in here. If you watch the Anthony Bourdain No Reservations episode of Penang, you can see this very house that we're staying in, 59A Chu J. We do have to share a bathroom and a shower and it's back here. Over here is like the kitchen area, and over here is the bathroom. Looks like it's a shower and a toilet. And then right out here is the water. Oh, the breeze feels so nice. Wow. I could just sit out here for hours just watching the water. This is so peaceful. Even with the crazy film crew. This is definitely worth the wait, I think. So beautiful. If only that bird would stop honking. So after our arduous Uber ride, leaving from Chu Jetty, we have arrived at Air Itam Laksa Market for some delicious, awesome laksa. Let's see what they got. Okay, we're at Market Air Yitam Laksa, which is famous for their Assam Laksa. Very sour, very spicious, very fishy smelling. A lot of famous people have eaten here. This is the place to get Assam Laksa. Nice and sour. Very good. All the flavors going on here. Mm. Let me try to bring it for a bowl. The finished product. Kelly's still struggling over here to finish her laksa. Really flavorful, but it's it's kind of spicy. And ladies and gentlemen, Kelly Anderson. Finished it. Woo. So we just finished up our delicious bowl of Assam laksa. Now we're heading up this hill over here to the world famous Keklok Sea. Which, if you can see just to my left here, behind this building, it's right there. Doesn't look too far of a walk, so we're gonna head that way. The sign is uh, kind of funny, strictly no littering. Yeah, we got some rule breakers here. We are making our way up the steps to the top of the mount where Keklok Sea resides. Doesn't seem very busy along here. I thought there'd be some sort of vendors or other people, but looks like so far we're the only people going this way. Ah, there they are. I knew there'd be vendors along this path. We must just not start until we get up there. Not too many stairs to the top. Not too steep, wasn't bad. It wasn't like Japanese stairs. I didn't feel like it was super steep. But kind of 
tough after eating a pretty <laughs> big bowl of soup. Yeah. So. Looks like they've got a little uh, renovations currently in progress for this first area. Everything looks a little, uh, a little under construction. Overlooking Penang on the top of the hill. Near Itam is about 40 minutes from the city of, or the core of Georgetown. So a little bit of a ways. I'm not really sure what this sign means, but you don't want to visit the hubbub of civilization. So as you can see, we are back at the Airbnb after we left Keklokksi. We had to find an Uber, which again, up in that area was a little more difficult, a little more uh, rugged. So Kelly stopped at a church, asked the lady if we could use her Wi-Fi, or the church's Wi-Fi. She logged us in and we ordered the Uber to get us back to Chu Jenny. Thank you, church lady. <laughs> Jesus will reward you greatly. So, just hanging out here. We're watching the, uh, the tide go out and the sunset. So. It's a nice rainbow, too. It was really pretty. It's pretty peaceful out here. It's really nice. All right, travelers, we are back in our Airbnb after an awesome meal of nasi kandar. That was seriously the best nasi kandar we've had on this trip. After two times after we've had it. After two times we've had it. That was the best. So if you find yourself in Penang, you definitely have to try Nasi Kandar. Tomorrow is our last full day in Malaysia. We will be heading to Singapore. We have a non-stop flight, obviously, because it's not very far. <laughs> to Singapore, we're just going to spend two days before heading back to Japan. Today has been an awesome day filled with good food and awesome street art. Um, but we are going to end the vlog here. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe because we put out new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time. Thank you.